Herb Jones' is first team all defense going to shut down Jason Tatum. Yeah, good luck Zion Williamson bringing the ball up against Drew Holiday and Derek White. It's a locked on Pelicans and Celtics crossover. Let's go. You are locked on NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a uh, special edition of Locked On Pelicans, Locked On Celtics. I don't even know what to do in a, in a live in-person We're here. such professionals, but you throw any little variant into our intros or our how we do our shows, and we just become absolute rookies yeah. all over again. And we're like, hi, well, this is a microphone. How, hello? How do we? Yeah, this is our show. It's Locked On Celtics. This is Locked On Pelicans. We're doing this bonus podcast on a Friday in New Orleans. I'm here. I'm John Corrales. For those of you on the other side, uh, host of the Locked On Celtics podcast, I'm Jake Madison, host of Locked On Pelicans, at Nola Jake on Twitter. He's at John underscore right. Corrales. We also co-host on Wednesdays, hence why we're doing this in person, the Locked right. On NBA podcast We don't well. even have the excuse. Like, we do a show together all the time. For, why is for, the like, opening so awkward? For five years or something like that, like, too. Like, for as long as the network has existed. Yeah, pretty much. We've been working together. And but, yeah, here we are in New Orleans. At cheers cheer- to that. Cheers by the way. All right, so and we're going to do like kind of like a little crossover here where we'll talk a little bit about this matchup each team because why yeah. not? And then, then maybe we'll see all that in New Orleans later. Yeah, I mean, we're here. I'm here. We might as well podcast. Yeah, exactly. This is my 13th podcast in a row. Oh, wow. I've done, because the Celtics, I do bonus podcasts after the Celtics play on weekends. So I'm going to do one tomorrow night. I've been podcasting for 13 days. And then... Because they play tomorrow night, I'm going to do another five days. So it's going to be a 19, 19 games in a row. This is like the rodeo road trip, just playing just over and over and over again for me. So Locked On Pelicans listeners, don't, don't expect that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> As we get towards the playoffs, we're going to have more bonus shows and things like that. And I was teasing this. So it's going to be a fun end of the season for... So let's start with that. That's like a great way to jump off. The Celtics have nothing left to play for. What does that mean <laughs> going into this game? Okay, so they have... The wins and losses don't matter anymore, but how they play still matters. It's it's a weird spot to be in because I was explaining it to you before we started recording. It's it's how they play, but also how they figure certain things out because this is going to be a great test with Zion uh, being a very unique kind of guy to defend where the Celtics are going to have to figure out uh, different matchups, different combinations, different strategies. And you might see them do things that you ask yourself, why, why is Joe Mazzulla putting this guy on the floor? Why is he going to this matchup? It's not working. Zion is scoring at will. Why are you still doing this, Joe Mazzulla? And we saw that in, in this, uh, the, the, the loss they just suffered uh, against the Atlanta Hawks, where Kristaps Porzingis was targeted over and over and over again by DeJounte Murray. You're, you're trying to get film. You're trying to get reps. You're trying to... I compared it to a spring training pitcher. It's, it's almost like preseason for the playoffs or yes, something like that, that's right? right. You've like, it's like they've completed the regular season, and now we're in a two- to three-week preseason again for the real season, the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they throw out there. I, I don't know what they're going to be working on, but I'm sure they're going to be different combinations. I don't know if certain guys are going to rest. Uh, the injury report will be interesting, but I'm looking for just what what is Joe Mazzulla trying to work on? And whether it results in a win or a loss, I know Celtics fans hate that I'm saying this, but because they want to see wins... I just want to see them do certain things well. And it just kind of depends on the flow of the game, what presents itself. Like the Pelicans are going to be like, oh, this is, this is what we're doing well today. And, and Missoula's going to be like, oh, this is great. Let's work on stopping this or whoever it is that, that's getting hot from three or penetrating or whatever. They're going to have their opportunity. Like, oh, this is great that this is happening. Here are a few things that we want to work on. 
So that's, which, which is kind of perfect for the Pelicans who are in the midst of like a crazy Western Conference playoff race. And we talked about this on Locked On NBA for those who are everydayers of Locked On NBA, and you should be. And we, <laughs> uh, we're talking about that on the show on Wednesday where the West is just tight, right? Like yeah. every game kind of matters and why the Pelicans are in the midst of a six game homestand right now. It's been brutal. You opened up against the Oklahoma City Thunder, lose in heartbreaking fashion, come back and kind of take it to the Milwaukee Bucks yeah. on Thursday night. But then this Boston game was looming big. And when you look at the Pelicans strength of schedule, if you base it based off just opponent winning percentage, anyone who has the Celtics on their schedule has like a horrible looking strength of schedule remaining because their winning percentage is so, so good high, and it skews yeah. things. But if they're not going to come in and be doing this like at the same level because things are locked up and they're experimenting a little bit, I'm sure they want to try and win the game and not play poorly. It opens the door for this to be a slightly easier game for New Orleans maybe than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, and I also, it's it's kind of an interesting mix because the Celtics have to work on things separately from whether they win or lose, but they also have to work on their chemistry to, to make sure that that doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. And they have to start ramping guys up for playoff minutes, which means Tatum and Brown have to get up over 40 minutes a game for a couple of these games. These, these guys have to start playing playoff minutes, and that's going to inherently make them very good because when they're all on the floor together playing their big minutes, they're going to start doing you know the typical things that they do mm -hmm. to win games. They're going to be very difficult to defend. So it's like a little of column A, a little of column B, and you still kind of need to win games so you don't lose that edge, that mentality of like, look, we know that the regular season has been decided, and it's just two, three more wins, and you're going to get that overall, that top overall seed. Mm -hmm. But you still want to be able to win games so you can just remember Hey, we, yeah, can, yeah, we yeah. can win these games. There's a psychological thing. Well, it's like it's like a killer instinct mentality, right? Like you don't want that kind of softened, right? You want to remember right. how you can just snap into it and beat teams. There's also, you know, you mentioned the psychological aspect of it. That goes for your opponents too, right? If you look at this Celtics team and they're just not taking a break, right? They're like, we're going to just punish teams. And they've been by far the best team in the league throughout the whole season, right? That sends a message to anyone they're going to play in the first round. Mm -hmm. You know, they just lost to Atlanta. They could, in theory, play Atlanta in the first could, round yeah. right you don't want Atlanta to come in being like with with confidence thinking that they can win you want that team being like well we're losing in four would be a great thing and just kind of get out of all of that so I don't think this is going to be where you know I had a lot of Pelicans fans asking me are the Celtics going to rest guys like they're just going to take it off they're not going to care and I'm like I don't think it's going to be that New Orleans still needs to do what they want to do which means playing through Zion and getting some of these other yeah. guys going and it's going to be a tough test. Yeah, and actually, the, the injury report did come out. They, none of the main guys are sitting out this week. Right. Way. Now, how what combinations does he use? How many minutes do they play? This could be one of those, hey, we're going to approach this like a playoff game because this is a playoff caliber opponent. Uh, theoretically, a team that you know could be a, an NBA Finals matchup. So let's, let's go out there and play a good team hard and, and just keep that side of their game kind of sharp, right? You, you, mm -hmm. Maybe maybe you do the working on your curveball analogy against the, you know, I think maybe they have the Charlotte Hornets on the schedule, right. you know, coming up. Maybe that's a game where you just work on that. Maybe this is a game where, okay, we're, we've, we've had two kind of tough losses. The pressure, not that the, the guys feel it, but... You don't want to have to answer media questions after another loss where things aren't going great. Maybe you just want to go out there, take care of business, play like your normal selves. So when you go face the media and people like me, you don't have to ask, you know, answer the question of, hey, why does Jason Tatum slow it down so much in the fourth quarter and you can't finish things in a tight game? You know, maybe you go out there and try to, to win a game by double digits and, and have like a happy media session afterwards and people are like, oh, remember, we're actually a great team. Well, you don't want distractions and things like that, it, right? And like, it does become a distraction yeah. and it's, it, it gets old. The guys don't care so much about all the stuff that I'm talking about, but also it, it can get old and you just don't want that 
negativity to seep into the locker room. That makes a lot of sense. So coming up next here on the crossover episode of Locked On Pelicans, Locked On Celtics here, which is going to be cross-posted to both of the shows. Let's talk like Zion, kind of how the Pelicans can win this game, some of the key matchups in this one where each team has an advantage. That's coming up here next in this bonus episode of Locked On Pelicans, Locked On Celtics. Right now, though, I am super excited to tell you about eBay Motors because, look, if you're a longtime listener of Locked On Pelicans, you know I've got about a 50-year-old Corvette, and I drove it around today, and I drove it around today because of eBay Motors. John saw it. He can confirm this. It is this. a sexy vehicle. That thing is beautiful. And it's running perfectly because of eBay Motors. Whatever you're looking for when it comes to your car, whether you're trying to level it up to peak performance, whether you want it to go faster, sound louder, ride a little bit smoother, have more utility, they have it all. And when I work on all of my cars, I only get my parts for eBay Motors because with over 122 million parts for your vehicle, you're going to keep it on the road and be in just awesome. What a flex. Right? All of my cars. All of my what cars. A flex. That's fair, fair enough. Yeah, and they all drive because of eBay Motors. So go to eBay Motors. They have the eBay Guaranteed Fit, and this is my favorite thing about it because I've ordered parts from other places. You put them into the car, and your hood doesn't close, and that's not a fun situation to be in whatsoever. So with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. So go to eBay Motors, get whatever you need. The prices are great. Otherwise I would be broke. So (laughs) eBay Motors, eBay is guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans and Locked On Celtics Locked your on first Celtics. listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday and sometimes on Saturdays. Locked On Celtics doesn't take days off. Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday, if you're him, covering everything you want to know about each team here. It's for, like it's like broadcasting 24-7 like Locked On Sports Today does. Which should be your YouTube. second listen today. Ross, come here for a second. Just pop your head in. You're, oh, you're, Jackson, you're, everybody! <laughs> Of Locked On Saints, producer extraordinaire right now. Make Locked On Saints your second listen today. I think that's safe to say. Locked On Saints is a good listen, man. Let's, you know, it's football. I don't know much about football. That's why you listen to the other shows here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Become everydayers. Listen Monday through Friday to my show, John's show, Ross's show, or any of our national shows here. (laughs) just waving. I, I kind of was like, this is ahead. this is where your voice goes. Did you did you see the Kelly Oubre thing from the other night with the Nick Nurse and the Clippers loss? Yeah, where he's like, you're a, and yeah. you're a. <laughs> he's literally, which I love. He just goes just up to every, every to ref. each ref. He goes, you're a something that we're not going to say on the show. You're, and he's point, he's like chopping yeah. at him with each, each hand, just incredible. The That's kind of what I was doing here, but in a good way. Was the ref who looked at him and was like, yeah, <laughs> thank you. You are dismissed. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk Zion. Zion Williamson. He's good. At that, that's literally what, what Giannis said after the game where they beat the Bucs. He is the Bucks large the other night. and fast and good at basketball. So how do the Pel- <laughs> Pelicans, how do the Celtics deal with something like that? Yeah, so I think one of the, the things that has kind of shifted the Pelican season is is the commitment to Point Zion. Point, so Point Zion's been key to all of that, I think, right? Yeah. Just... He's he's a weird kind of playmaker in my opinion, right? Brandon Ingram's a better, like, pure playmaker, more of a point guard than him, right? Mm. You say point Zion as if he's playing point guard, and it's more court gravity than it is pure yeah. playmaking, right? You think of, like, Chris Paul as a playmaker, the moves they put on, the strings they pull on a defense and the offense, right, to kind of create these advantages. Zion's advantage is he scores 70%, he shoots 70% at the rim, yeah. and you want to deny that basically at all costs. So you need to throw two, three, four body, five bodies at him at, at times. Times, which means guys are going to be open, and at that point, you just got to have a kickout pass and move the ball till you generate an open shot. Essentially, yeah. I, my my reaction is to throw the the most tenacious ball hounding uh, defender at him. Yeah. Um, even like, I think you say Peyton Pritchard, even go and just get into his airspace and. Say, all right, if you want to try to just post that matchup up, then you can throw some help over there. But you're taking away 
the playmaking because you're just disrupting his ball handling a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like that's one area he struggles with. Like he loses the ball, he'll have some turnovers because the handle isn't as tight as you want it. But the second one of the things I've noticed with him is like the second you throw a help defender at him and throw two at him, he passes out. Those yeah. passing lanes are open, and then you're dealing with guys like CJ McCollum, Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, who's a great shooter this season, right. too. So it's stay home on the shooters. And put the ball hound. Now I, I say I said Peyton Pritchard because he, I mean he's obviously coming off the bench, but I use him as an extreme example of like even Peyton Pritchard can guard. Uh, I say can guard, will guard. Uh, <laughs> um, there's a distinction there. It was like all the will guard the other night. Uh, um, the will guard Zion. <laughs> so <laughs> we soldier on. Um, but it's it's all about getting into his airspace and. One of the Celtic strengths is it starts with Drew Holiday and and someone we're pretty familiar with. Yes, and he has he's guarded all of the bigs that the Celtics have faced. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see like how are they going to approach this matchup with how are they going to use Holiday? And I, I really do think that what you do is you just pressure him full court and you you make it difficult for him to dribble up and, and maybe you take the ball, maybe you prevent the ball from even getting into his hands. So that's the thing, right? Like he doesn't bring the ball up the court a ton, particularly in half court after like a made shot. If he grabs a rebound, he'll go and push it in transition. But if it's like Celtics make a shot, make a three, whatever, and they're inbounding the ball, it's going to go to CJ. It's going to go to Herb Jones, who yeah. does a lot of that. And then they try and look to get it to Zion. But that's, I think, the area where you can deny some of that. Right. And if you can just make him a non-factor in half court offense which has happened it is like a disaster when that happens that's maybe the way to do it yeah so the 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 thing i fear most is zion in transition and zion distributing in general uh and and when he distributes it's you're going to get buried by a bunch of three pointers so it's stay home it's it's actually don't help um let him if he's going to shoot it, it's it's very much the um Kind of Joel Embiid type of uh, defense, where it's if he if Zion goes out and scores forty, I'm not worried about that as much as Zion scoring twenty five and the rest of the Pelicans just raining threes, and and that that's where the math starts to kick in. The Celtics have kind of struggled the, the past few games shooting three but they, pointers, but they're a good three point shooting. Everyone they're, in that team can shoot. The, everybody can shoot. <laughs> But there's variance there, yeah. and and so you just don't want to get into a three point shooting contest. Okay. So I think you, if you can neutralize Point Zion, that's Boston's best defensive uh, strategy, and and that starts with pressuring him with a Holiday or a Derek White, and also rebounding, which we saw was a big problem against the Atlanta Hawks. Rebounding and preventing that transition, because like you said, once once Zion gets over half court with a head of steam, it's forget it. Good luck. Just get out of the way. Yeah. Just make a business decision and don't end up on a poster. So that that's if you can prevent the transition and if you can make Zion uncomfortable handling the ball then I think the rest should fall into place. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's a Zion-centric team right now, particularly yeah. with no Brandon Ingram. They're, they're, they're hurting from that. They miss some of the playmaking. We've seen some of the times the offense not been nearly as good. They're not a better team without Brandon Ingram, despite some people wanting that to be the case here. <laughs> um yeah, Trey Murphy's good, but he's not going to be the same kind of like playmaker for everything with all of that. And I think you've seen that. You know, one of the things, and maybe we should get into this in the next segment here, would be if it's a close game because New Orleans has struggled with some of that. Boston's done a really good job with that. I also want to kind of get into the Herb Jones stuff too because yeah. this is a dude who's been phenomenal all season long. And like, this is a game people are going to watch, I have a feeling. So this is an opportunity for a guy like him to really stake a claim for first team all defense. I've said that in the open. I'm going to keep pushing it here. This is the agenda. Why don't we talk about that coming up next? Why don't we? All right. Hey, today's show is brought to you by Nissan. Uh, unless you're Jake Madison, who's zipping around New Orleans in a bunch of 50-year-old sports cars. I actually love Nissans, by the way, for the record. I'm, like, truly I, do. <laughs> I am an SUV guy. I'm definitely, because I'm 6'5", I'm a large person. 
and I love the SUVs. And Nissan has this great array of SUVs. Like the 2024 Nissan Rogue, it's perfect for city drives, like driving around here in New Orleans. Great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in. It's always updating. Uh, you don't have to connect this thing to your car. I hate like ripping the wire out by accident. They have Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store all built in. It's a 12.3 inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. It's a 2024 Rogue. Perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the big Nissan Armada. I saw one of these outside my hotel a couple days ago. Beautiful, beautiful thing, man. That's it looks want, looks rugged, it's, right? It is. It's going to change what you expect from a full size SUV. It's a rugged four x four that can seat up to eight. So all of us plus a few friends uh, in first class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop Nissan USA. Com. Today's show also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. It's going to offer you amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs. Go get yourself a Fire TV. Or if you like the TV that you have, you can just get the Fire Stick, plug it in, and now it becomes a Fire TV with millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. So whether you're into MLB opening weekend, whether you're watching the tournament, uh, you're going to want a Fire TV. And they've recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a consistent supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, like the Locked On Podcast Network. All of us, what's up? Your team every day. Yeah, that's right. So go check out Amazon Fire TV channels. unless you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more. Keep up to date on all the latest in the sports world, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and more. Plus, news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. I love those. Uh, check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. Learn more at Amazon.com slash TV. And thank you for making Locked On Celtics, Locked On Pelicans, Locked On Saints your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, unless you're John Corrales, in which case you are here literally every day of every the day. year. Every, every day. Every single day I'm going to start podcasting year. twice a day. That's not going to happen. I was like, wow, no. that is commitment. Well, I no. guess, yeah, one podcast like a day per each Celtics win or something like that. That's that makes right. zero sense. So... <laughs> Um, also, Locked On Knicks, who's also in New Orleans right now. So we're having like yeah, a Locked On reunion it's, it's here. It's going to be a lot of fun. If uh, you have a reunion in a city, New Orleans is the city to do it. Uh, all the hosts want to come visit here. There's a reason for that. Hell yeah. So, all right. Yeah, How, okay. first, those are all your first listens. Anyway, let's get into... <laughs> let's get into Herb Jones. Yeah, Herb Jones. So Jason Tatum, right? Like, yes. He's, you and I did this on Locked On NBA on Wednesdays where we kind of talked about first team. And I had Jason Tatum on my first team all NBA. Yeah. Right, Herb Jones, I think, is one of the premier defenders in the NBA. I think most people would agree He's with that. Very good at that. How do you make Jason Tatum uncomfortable? Like, what does Herb Jones need to do in this game other than just kind of be like Herb Jones and kind of awesome? So yeah, it, it's it, I mean, just be yourself. Uh, but so so <laughs> great, Tatum, great life advice. <laughs> yeah, just be you and don't answer to anybody else. <laughs> so they don't like you. You don't want to date that person anyway. <laughs> Wow, we're really devolving. We're we're getting into locked on therapy. We're we're gonna wrap up soon. <laughs> so okay, Tatum, the strength of the Celtics is the star power all across the board that we have in a starting lineup five All Star caliber players, and the problem is when you have a Herb Jones, Tatum does a great job of getting off the ball and moving the ball around. And if you want to play four on four, great. The Celtics have no problem doing that. Um, So it's not as much about making Tatum specifically uncomfortable. It's how can you disrupt what the Celtics are trying to do in all of their actions? So if there's a team that's out there that can neutralize Herb Jones just by saying, fine, whoever he's defending is not going to get the bulk of the shots, at least to start the game, 
then that's how they're going to do it. So if, if he's up in Tatum's airspace, right, and Tatum has a high dribble, kind of the same concept as you're, you're uh, guarding Zion Williamson, he's got the high dribble. If, if you're going to try to poke away and, and try to get away from, like, Tatum, Tatum's not going to try to drive on Herb Jones. Right. What he's going to try to do is figure out where the other matchup is, and if you're switching, try to attack a more favorable, more favorable matchup. What they're probably going to do is run a lot of their horn sets, uh, cross screens for Jalen Brown, involving Derek White, getting Derek White to pop open, uh, getting Sam Hauser in the game and having him spot up in the corner. So when you do get that matchup and you drive and suck in the defense, it's more going to be about Herb Jones not guarding Tatum. It's making the read and jumping into passing lanes and maybe understanding Boston's tendencies where it's a lot of drive and kick. I think the one thing that a playoff opponent should key in on for Boston is if you have a rim defender there and you funnel Tatum or Brown... New Orleans doesn't have that. Well, right, and that's the problem, but if you can get but even if Zion is down there he's he's enough like for the Celtics it's not about is that Rudy Gobert okay over there it's is someone in my way so if Zion is down there and he's well, he's been a much better defender <laughs> recently for everything. Like the kind of the turnaround he's had from the All Star break to now to see him as a defender blocking shots, like we haven't seen him do since like Duke and things like that, has helped New Orleans significantly. He's an athletic guy, big time. He can jump. He can meet you at the rim. Mm-hmm. And the whole point of this is, when Boston sees any resistance at the rim, they tend to drive and kick because the whole point is drive, kick, swing, swing, shoot. If you can jump that passing lane, so if you're Herb Jones and you're funneling Jason Tatum into the teeth of the defense and you have Zion there, I say as a rim protector, but more as just a, hey, look at me, I'm Zion Williamson, Mm -hmm. I'm athletic, you should fear me, what's going to happen is Herb Jones funnels the, the, the driver into that and then peels off. And you do like a late switch and he should jump to the corner and and jump that passing lane. Because what's going to happen is when the driver gets to the rim, they're going to want to pass out. And it's always a kick to the corner. That's my biggest like tendency that I would key in on for the Celtics. Because if you can jump that passing lane, you can force the turnovers. And then you get into that transition where New Orleans can be very good and Boston can struggle. Well, and New Orleans runs like a pretty heavy, although they really mix it up against the Milwaukee Bucks in a way. They run a, like switching heavy scheme. So you might start with Herb Jones on Jason Tatum. A pick comes. All of a sudden, he's on Zion. He thinks he can drive, beat him. Yeah. There's no pressure at the rim. Zion's athletic. Now Herb Jones is kind of roaming in a little bit of a sense, right? Like that kind of creates some of that kind of problem. I, I do worry about the driving kick game with this, though, because New Orleans, while they're a top 10 in terms of three-point percentage, they don't take a ton of threes. You talked about the math concern earlier. I worry about that on the flip side because yeah. when you have Zion, right? And same thing when Brandon Ingram's out there. The, when you have two starters and the guys who are taking the majority of your usage and they don't take threes against a team that can take a lot of threes and nail a lot of threes because literally everyone on the Celtics can shoot. It's a great thing. Yeah, um, Concerns me with some of that. So that driving kick game, if it gets into kind of like a three-point shootout, you're concerned. I'm concerned about that too when it comes to New Orleans here. But they've been... T- trying to take more, but when again you have Zion who doesn't take threes and you're trying to feed him the ball, that's a math issue at a certain point. Yeah, that's like a very real thing in today's NBA. And it, it, so this is where the Celtics defensively, like if Zion doesn't have the ball, this is why I think Holiday will stay on him because if Zion is spotting up, then he's not a threat. So, Z- so, so Holiday can be a roamer like he has been off of other bigs. And if Zion does get the ball and Holiday's on him, then he can be disruptive. So I think that's, that's going to be part of their defensive plan. I just think the Celtics, at their best, provide too many options for the Pelicans to defend. I mean, they have how many wins? 
Uh, we were 57. They, they yeah. clinched the number one seed before anyone else <laughs> yeah. had clinched a playoff spot. That kind of tells you all you need to know. So it's going to be, look, there's a reason they're favored in this one per fan duel. You know, New Orleans has got an uphill climb in this one. Regardless, it's going to be a fun game and I'm happy you're here. I'm always happy to be here. It's funny, my, my brother called me up and I was at uh, Baltimore Airport, BWI. Mm -hmm. He's like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to New Orleans. He goes, you never miss a chance to get to New Orleans. This is like, like your third or fourth trip where right. we've hung out. We're going to go have fun in New Orleans right now, which means we're going to wrap up this show. Yes, we're done. That's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans, Locked On Celtics, Locked On NBA, Locked On Saints, all of the things here. <laughs> Ross, I love you. You're laughing, but like... There you go. So, of course, we support our own here. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Subscribe wherever you get your, pod, your, your podcast. There we go. I can do this. <laughs> and on YouTube as well. You'll see us at the arena. Come say hi if you see us. It's going to be a fun Definitely. game here. Bonus show for y'all because we're in town. Locked On Knicks too. May as well because yeah. we're going to see them later. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. Knicks. Enjoy the game. We'll both be back for our next shows talking about this one, what happened, talking about some of the predictions and things we talked about here. As always, Jake Madison at Nola Jake on Twitter, host of Locked On Pelicans. John Corrales, host of Locked On Celtics at John underscore Corrales on Twitter. Thanks. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, y'all, for listening. We'll see y'all next time.